Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 15th of July 2013. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up your daily Steam deals. As always, the Steam deals will go on for 48 hours. That means if you missed yesterday's, do not worry, they're still there. Go and watch my sale box from yesterday. You'll figure out exactly what to waste your money on. So let's kick it off today, shall we? A reminder that I will not give the Australian price unless it differs from the US price. So that's a default position. Just bear that in mind. There are a couple of games that are a little bit more expensive in Oz, I am afraid. So let's start off with Reyes. 50% off, taking it down to $5, 5 euros, 3 pounds. 49. Okay, so my experience with this is that it's very, very slow paced. It also has the annoyance of getting stuck in pause mode. And that unfortunately meant that I had to restart the lengthy tutorial twice, which to me really put me off actually playing the game, which is very unfortunate. This is something that I believe may have been fixed since then, but it is an issue that I had at the time when it came out in May. It is a god game, essentially, a rather nicely crafted one, but again, it is very slow-paced indeed. If you're looking for something that does move at a glacial pace, then it might very well be the game for you. It's a little bit more relaxing than you might otherwise expect from that kind of strategy game. But I personally did not do in-depth coverage on this title. I, I kind of got bored of it frankly, and that was mostly due to the fact that tutorials are unskippable and take hours to complete. Also the fact that the various giants that you use in that game to actually change the world move incredibly slowly, so it is not a game that really gets along at all that great a pace. If you want a better impression of this, I'd go and look at Northern Lion's video on Reyes because it does cover the game significantly better than I can. As I said, I think this is going to be a game that is very much aimed at a certain kind of player, and if you're looking for something a little bit more fast-paced, then you're not going to find it here. Killing Floor, 80% off, takes it down to $4 at €3.59 and two ninety nine in Tier 2, as well as £2.99. This is my favorite kill a bunch of zombies games. I've said it time and again, I believe it's better than Left 4 Dead. Admittedly, it's kind of unfair to suggest that because it's not really the same kind of game. Left 4 Dead is a game about getting from A to B. Killing Floor is a game about just surviving and getting to the end of the waves. You are also able to buy weapons in between rounds. It has some of the most satisfying gunplay that I've seen from a game like this. It also has a phenomenal amount of support that was put into the game after launch. It's quite a lot of DLC for it. Most of that is 50% off as well. Well, the community weapon pack is worth having. Golden weapon packs are just kind of... They're purely cosmetic, so you don't really need them, as are the character packs, but they're a lot of fun to have regardless. This is a title that has a ton of content in it and is a huge amount of fun to play with friends, and the satisfying gunplay really does keep that game going, as far as I'm concerned. There is no game where it is more fun to pop the head of a zombie than Killing Floor, and as a result, I would heartily recommend it. Not worth playing in single player though, just want to point that out. Doesn't really have a good single player mode, it's very much co-op throughout the title. Terraria, 75% off, that's $2.49, €2.49, £1.49. Pretty good. <laughs> I think you know my opinions on Terraria, quite frankly. There is a big update coming out quite soon. This is probably a good time to grab it. For those of you who don't know what it is, well, we did a very lengthy series on the channel and may do more, perhaps. We'll see. And it's very much a 2D world exploration game combined with some Metroidvania. If you're looking for construction in the style of Minecraft, you won't find it here, but you will find a good solid progression system and a lot of fun to discover. Terraria is really solid, and now that the dev is back on board providing support, it is very easy to recommend it. Max Payne 3, 75% off, takes it down to $10 at €7.49, £6.24, £12.49 in Australia for some reason. My opinion on Max Payne is that it's the worst Max Payne game. Uh, Max Payne 1 and 2 are, in my opinion, a hell of a lot better than this, and thankfully you can also get those if you so desire. Getting them separately is possible. Now, the last time that I said certain games were available separate, I was told that in certain regions that's not true, so do just bear that in mind. Max Payne 1 and 2 are both available for $2.49 each. Max Payne Complete comes with Max Payne 3. The Max Payne Bundle is 75% off and is $3.74 or your regional equivalent, so I would have a look at that. The reason I don't like Max Payne 3 is it's got far too many cutscenes, not enough action, it's consistently interrupting you, and it does a pretty poor job of telling the story through annoying unskippable cutscenes as opposed to the graphic novel style and through the gameplay that can be done with the original Max Payne games. 
That's the problem I've got with it. I don't think it's a very good Max Payne game. The game has like three hours of cutscenes, which for me is something that I absolutely hate. So I would recommend Max Payne 1 and 2 if you're looking for the gunplay, great level design, and excellent storytelling and exposition. You will not find that in Max Payne 3. A lot of people disagree with me. The gunplay in Max Payne 3 is pretty good. It's hard to argue with that. But my problem is it constantly interrupts you. Stop interrupting my slow-mo bullet time shooty fest. I like that. Let me do it. Dawn of War 2 Retribution, 75% off, taking it down to $7.49, 5 euros, 5 pounds, and $10 in Australia. This also includes the other Dawn of War games. All of these titles are standalone, so that's something to bear in mind. You don't actually have to buy all of them. The complete pack is available, which comes with both expansions of the base game. The franchise pack comes with... It comes with a lot of stuff, honestly, and you don't need any of it <laughs> for the most part. So I would heartily avoid the franchise pack, honestly. It is kind of a waste of your time. Most of the DLC for this game is a bunch of war gear, which is irrelevant, and some cosmetic stuff, which is nice if you happen to have a particular favorite faction within the Warhammer 40,000 universe. I would suggest picking up the base game. While Retribution does add extra races and also allows you to play the campaign with all of the races as opposed to just Space Marines, I think the campaign for the Dawn of War game and for the expansion Chaos Rising is significantly better. It's more focused, it's got better in-game character development, it's got more loot. It's just a better title in general. I found Retribution's campaign to be very repetitive. It had a lot of very cloney levels, and each individual campaign was not as strong as you might imagine as the full Space Marine campaign for Dawn of War 2 and Chaos Rising. The titles are squad-based tactical real-time strategies. They do not emphasize base building. They emphasize the construction of units and the equipment of said units. That was disappointing for some people because they actually liked Dawn of War 1, which had base building in it, but it does have the same kind of control point gameplay that you'll find in the original Dawn of War, as well as titles like Company of Heroes. It's a good price for Retribution, but really this is the kind of expansion that I'd only recommend to people that have already played and enjoyed the original Dawn of War 2 and its expansion pack. Otherwise, grab yourself a copy of Dawn of War 2 and get to it. The campaign for that game is excellent. Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, 75% off, takes it down to $10, 9 euros 24, 7 pounds 49. I've been in two minds about Sins of a Solar Empire for quite some time. The one hand, I see Sins of a Solar Empire as being a very enjoyable 4X Lite RTS. Yeah? It's really a real-time strategy with some 4X elements in it, rather than a true 4X. It does have some fairly fun combat, but it tends to get very blobby. There's not really a lot of control involved in it. It's more a case of throw the bigger army at the enemy. There's also quite a lot of passive play, especially against the AI, where you can kind of sit there playing for hours and hours and not really get anything done. But the multiplayer community tends to help out in that respect, since it does feature a significantly uh, more aggressive player base. I think you'll find a lot of enjoyment in this, honestly, if you've never played anything like this before. Rebellion is a standalone, which means that it does include the functionality of the previous games, and it's the best way to experience this title, considering you don't have to pick up entrenchment and diplomacy. It is a game about empire management, combat, and research, and it also has a fairly in-depth diplomatic system. It had an entire expansion dedicated to that, and it's also doubled the number of factions by having a loyalist and a rebellion version of each of the main three. It's pretty damn good at this point, and I would actually recommend it if you're looking for some action RTS with a little bit of Forex sprinkled in for good measure. Dust and Elysian Tale takes it out at seven dollars fifty, six euros ninety nine, and five pounds ninety nine. Definitely an unexpected surprise, in my honest opinion. I think that this is a title that really impressed me more than I thought it would. The art style may put some people off. However, it's a really great action game that's very well realized with a very engrossing world. It's got plenty of exploration in it. It's got an awful lot of fun combat and colorful characters. The voice acting leaves something to be desired, I have to say. I think there's a couple of characters in that which are rather annoying to say the least, and then there are others that are fairly well done. I don't think the main character is that well done, but I think the supporting cast is. It's a phenomenal achievement when you think about it. It was done by a single guy. He did the game design, he actually coded the damn thing, and he did 
did the art, which is very, very rare indeed. And all of them turned out to be very good indeed. I have to say the PC port is great. It's something that I think you should experience. It's got a good 10 to 12 hour long campaign. The only thing I would say is that you should crank the difficulty up because the default is very, very easy indeed. And the game can be beaten pretty much by spamming one move. This becomes less of a problem when you crank that difficulty all the way up. So a hearty recommendation for Dust and Elysian Tail. Wargame Air Land Battle, 50% off, takes it down to $20, 20 euros, and £14.99. Not a ground-shaking discount, but it is a fairly recent release. Now, I didn't do a video of this, but I have played it quite extensively. The reason I didn't do a video is because I was trying to actually get a game together with Northern Lion, but we weren't able to connect for some reason. We tried and tried and tried, but the multiplayer did seem to have some bugs at the time. That was about a month ago, though. Single-player-wise, this game is actually stacked with campaign content, and the way to describe it would be as a fairly realistic real-time strategy using a ton of real-world units. If you're expecting something that has fancy abilities and all sorts of nonsense like that, you won't get it. It's a fairly slow-moving territory control game, but the authenticity the title provides is very strong indeed. A lot of very realistically modeled units, they interact in the way that you would expect, and the multiplayer has up to 10 on 10, which is quite nice if you're not really in the mood to control a huge amount of different units. It does have quite the learning curve. The game doesn't really explain itself all that well. You have to kind of learn as you go to try and figure out what the best unit compositions for your deck are. But it is an interesting title if you're looking for something a little bit slower paced and something a little bit more realistic in the strategy side of things without overdoing it in the sense of it being a very complex grand strategy with a depth so far it would reach down to the Balrog itself. <laughs> Castle Crashers, 75% off, taking it down to $3.74, 3 euros and £2.49. Decent port, not great, recommended to use it with a controller. It was, of course, a fairly old release on Xbox Live Arcade that finally made its way through to the PC. The game itself is pretty fun with friends. Solo, I really wouldn't. I mean, it's a very, very repetitive brawler with enemies that take a lot of hits to take down, which can be pretty annoying. The game's playable with a controller, and it does now have fully rebindable keys, but the 360 button prompts will appear regardless of whether or not you're using the keyboard or the 360 pad, which is pretty irritating. It's best played with friends that can tolerate the sense of humor. It's got a great soundtrack and art style and a decent amount of replayability thanks to the unlockable weapons and classes. But if you aren't playing it with friends, you are missing out on a lot of what the game actually has to offer. So that's what I would suggest. Get it with a bunch of friends, have a good brawl in time. Which brings us to our deal of the day, which I think is going to have to be Dishonored. 66% off great price and already a reduced price to begin with takes it down to ten dollars 19 10 euros 19 five pounds and nine pence great deal for the guys in the uk and sorry australia fifteen dollars 29 pretty damn fantastic stealth orientated game you can absolutely play it in a full murder mode but i've got to say when it comes to assassination games this is way better than assassin's creed nicely challenging great universe well realized awesome art style really satisfying stealth as well as gunplay the blink mechanic in particular is fantastic really great for moving around on the rooftops and getting up to high places very quickly an extremely well-rounded well-paced experience as far as i'm concerned and something that I would heartily recommend. DLC is pretty good as well. I'd maybe avoid the Dunwall Trials because they're really just a bunch of challenges, but the latest DLC is well worth picking up. This is the best game that Arcane has ever made, and that's saying a lot considering I really liked Dark Messiah regardless of the problems it had. So I would heartily recommend this without question. Okay, folks, that is me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the Sailbox, and I'll see you next time.